How's everybody doing out there tonight? Got some beautiful weather out there. I don't know how many people are going to jump on here tonight. It's hard for me to get down here in this basement to do it. Let a few you guys jump on here and we'll start this off. I won't take up too much of your time tonight. All right, I got a Facebook user on here saying good evening. Is that is that you, Jeff Johnson? Jason. Good to see you on here, bud. Yeah, you're coming up Facebook user for some reason instead of your name. I don't know why. We got a few of them that do that. About three of them, actually. Don't know why it does that, bud. Mark Coleman used to have that problem, and Mark, Mark got it figured out somehow. Oh, Danny Robinson. Hot and humid for here. I'll tell you what, bud. It is hot and humid here. Just like it is there. Run them 90 degrees, 90% humidity. But with it being as dry as it is, I love this humidity for the early morning, late evening dews. Because I'll tell you what, that's the only moisture these plants are getting right now. It's been a dry one. Between the scare of EHD and insects right now, I don't know which one I'm more scared of right now, which one's going to happen the quickest. So far, knock on wood, no signs of either one of them, but man, it could happen at any time as dry as it is right here. Insects could happen any time, but I have more issues with them during the dry season than I do the wet season, so... Who else is out there tonight? Jason, I'm glad to see you got your order, bud. I've seen the picture of it. That's a good deal. I appreciate the text. Let me know, too. Man, I wish we could get rain. It shows we're going to have rain, and then right before we get it, it's gone. Now, my, my forecast on my app on my phone only goes for like 10 days, and I think it is 10 days, and uh, nothing, nothing at all. Preston, good to have you on here, bud. How's things going in Minnesota, bud? Well, we get fired up here, guys. Uh, like I say, I'm not going to take a lot of your time tonight. This topic here, uh, talking about insecticides, it is a problem that we probably face more than what we realized. Two years ago, you know, here in Illinois, actually all over, Kansas had them bad, Iowa, Illinois, Ohio, the army worms just completely tore things up and just demolish plots overnight. And, it, and it's odd on how they can do that and how fast they can move through an area and get to the next plot, to the next plot. Uh, there is things you can spray uh, to help kill them, to prevent them. Uh, so many different things. I got a list of them here that I'm gonna actually gonna comment on here so you guys can read different products you can use, actually different chemicals. Uh, the product I use, easy thing to get. See if I can get it here so you can read it without the light killing you. That is a product I have used for probably 10 years now. And especially on my brassica plots. That's the ones I have the most trouble with. Menards, 
ten dollars that little concentrated bottle right there will last me i think i'm on my third year with it it doesn't take very much uh per gallon of water to spray a plot you can use it in your gardens your your yawn, lawns it will not hurt the deer uh the good thing about this product here is it will kill on contact and it will prevent for three months so when i when it, when it comes to me spraying a lot of people ask me when do, when's the best time to spray for me i like spraying early early morning especially if we're dealing with army worms because army worms mostly feed through the night so i like spraying early morning to get that on them plants get it on there uh and get it doing its job and with them eating on that it's going to kill them because most of them are buried into the ground they're going to come up through the night get on the plant uh and then you're going to have real good success getting rid of them so an early morning i always try to spray between you know daylight till about 10 o'clock 11 o'clock somewhere in there and then i quit spraying i don't spray during the heat of the day i don't spray during the evening i always just spray early morning that's just something that a farmer told me years ago I've stuck with it and I've had great success with it. Now, when I had the worms real bad three years ago, I went out one evening with my three-wheeler, with the tanks filled up in the dark with a spotlight and the worms were everywhere. So I went ahead and sprayed that night to get the contact on the worms. But most of your insects that you're going to have, your grasshoppers, your crickets, your beetles, stuff like that, Spraying them early in the morning is fine. Uh, they're going to eat that plant. Uh, they're going to they're die from it. You're not going to have no more problem with it. You have some tore up plants, but not as bad as what you should. There is a lot of chemicals. I will comment this on here. Just so you guys will have it. Them four products, them four uh, insecticides right there, them chemicals are four of the best ones you can use on a food plot. It's not going to harm the animals. You can use on your just like with this on your your lawns your gardens your flower beds anything like that so there's four different chemicals there each one of them will do the job you don't have to mix them all four together one of them would do the job so the bifen here that's what's in this mix here uh it doesn't take a lot which actually this one here if i'm not mistaken i think it's only 0.8%. That's all that's in that. And it will kill them dead. I mean, it will wipe them out. So it doesn't take a lot. Now, a lot of people think that the weather, migration, stuff like that has a lot to do with, with insects, not, not just army worms, but insects in general. But for the guys that plant a lot of brassicas, the brassica plots are the ones that bring your insects in. So when we talk about rotate Nebraska plot, you know, we always say, hey, you need to rotate that plot every two to three years because it's going to destroy the soil. But at the same time, in that two to three years, your chance of getting a lot of insects in there is a lot higher. So rotating them out, throwing some clovers in there, some cereal rye, some alfalfa, some chicory, something like that, rotating them through is going to help that soil and it's going to keep a lot of them insects down. So if you're going out there and you're planting your brassicas and you're planting them every single year and that second, third year, you're pouring the lime to it, you're pouring the fertilizer to it to build that soil up so you can continue planting them to get the good growth out of them, you're, you're, just, you're, you're taking a chance of getting a lot of insects in there. So rotating them out is going to help you a lot. Hello, Croppersville, Indiana. I appreciate it. Preston's talked about some warm, good rains in there lately. That's a good thing, but Minnesota. I just came back from Wisconsin. We had some bad storms go through Black River Falls, Wisconsin, up there for a charity event I was at on uh, Saturday. But, uh, but no, rotating them plots is going to help out a lot. You know, that's going to definitely help out. Uh, you know, you'll get a lot more harm out of your plots by not rotating them out every so let's say three years. I like doing two, but let's say three years. Rotate them brassicas around, get them in different areas. Uh, build that soil back up by planting some clovers, alfalfa, cereal rice, chicory, something in that source. So you do a lot better that way. You're going to have a lot less harm with the insects. Uh, you're still going to get insects no matter what. You're going to get them, uh, but just maybe not as bad. 
Now, knock on wood, last two years haven't had any issues with the beetles that bad, haven't had any issues with the army worms that bad. I still continue to spray for them even though I don't see them. So, like my clover plots that you guys always see, when I go through and I spray my clover fuel every three months, depending on when I'm mowing. Now, this year I haven't had to mow that much because of our drought. But I will actually mix the insecticide right in with my foiler fertilizer, my clover fuel, and I will spray it then. I'll do the same thing with our jolt fertilizer for the annual mixes. I'll mix it in anytime I spray the jolt down because I want that continued coverage. Even though it's three months, I'll spray it a little bit more just so I have that coverage there and I don't hardly get anything ate up that bad at all. Now, I know down, down south, a lot of guys, you know, they get with the grasshoppers. You can't do nothing there. You just pretty much got to let them migrate through before you plant stuff like that. But here in the Midwest where we're at, you know, you'll get a lot of uh, a lot of good use out of a product like this. Cheap, get it, like I said, Menards, Walmart, Amazon, anywhere you can find this product for under $10. It'll last you this one here. Like I said before, it's about three years old now, and it's still a little less than half full. So I'm only running about a half ounce per gallon of water is all I'm running with it. So and I'm running about 11 gallons of water per acre calibrated out so it's uh it'll really really help you out and it's just another thing we always talk about maintenance so when, when you're working on a plot you want to maintain it there's absolutely nothing wrong by adding a product like this right to it to help prevent them bugs and stuff from getting in them plants eating the plants destroying the root system you know it is a very very cheap insurance plan by using something like this or one of the other uh, other three, the other three here that I got listed in these four, uh, one of them, like I said, the Bifen is and then this one here. The other three, you can find them products all over too. Just look at the label, see what they are. Uh, but very, very inexpensive insurance to help out your plots and uh, give the deer all they can eat. We don't need to be feeding these bugs. They don't look very good on the wall when we mount them. So we got we got to take care of our deer. And if any of you guys have any questions about this stuff, yell at me while we're on here. Te text it over to me uh, on here, chat on here. And uh, I or there's one of my pro staffers there, Jason Buell's on here. Uh, I got two of my Jasons on here actually tonight. So uh, we'll definitely help you out there. Talk to you as much as we can on it. I do have some questions here that people is uh, asked. I kind of went through some of it here, but we can get into that here in a little bit. But... <clears throat> with the fall planting coming on now, I know some people are already planting, especially up north. Uh, I'm getting ready to. I'm getting ready to head out to Nashville uh, a week from Wednesday to a show in Nashville, Tennessee. I get back. I'm hoping to get planted because I got a uh, getting ready to be laid down for probably a week or two with some some major uh, dental work, major work that they've been working on me for about the last three months on. Uh, so I finally get the final touches of it done then. So I'm gonna be down and out. So I'm praying that Monday, that Sunday night when I get home, I'm hoping Monday I can plant because I go into the dentist on Tuesday and then I, I might be in pain planting food plots. I'll just put it that way if I can't get it done Monday. But I got everything killed off. All I gotta do is work the ground, call the packet, spread the seed and call the packet again. And then I can, kick back on the couch for about a week and a half and heal myself up. So, but, uh, but no, with it coming on, I thought it was a great time to bring up this topic on the insecticides just because, you know, just like anything else, these bugs, they're horrible. I mean, anybody's walked through a food plot and seen the bugs fly up or the bugs crawling around on them or going through, and especially your basket plots and seeing the holes all laid in them, you know what it's from. You know, 99% of the time it's the beetles doing it. Uh, now, one thing I have found out and I did not know, uh, this product right here, one reason I did use, uh, grab this product is I did a lot of research on it years ago and actually the chemical that's in it. And it says it will not hurt honeybees. So, and I like honeybees on my clover. You know, I like that pollinator type part of it. Uh, and it said it won't hurt them. So that's one reason I want this. Now, there is some other ones out there that will kill bees and all that stuff, too. So that's one reason I really like this product here in front of the laptop, because I'm not I'm not hurting my my honeybees. So.
Anybody got any questions out there? Anything on insecticides? So I'm probably going to go right into some planting tips here in a little bit. Just because like I say there's not a lot to this insecticide stuff. It's just kind of little little things here and there that you kind of learn on your way. And like I said, it's an easy insurance policy. There's nothing wrong with adding a little bit of insecticide uh, or pesticide with your uh, uh, with your foil fertilizers or just all on their own. You know, get out there and spray these plots. You want them to be the best as they can be. So, and right now with us not having any rain, I'm just kind of leery. I'm, I'm worried about the... Uh, I'm worried about EHD. I'm worried about insects. Uh, like I said earlier on here, for the ones that weren't on here, I have the worst luck with insects on a dry year more than I do a wet year. So, and it's been dry here. I mean, three months, no rain. Uh, got about three and a half inches of rain in about 45 minutes one day, which 90% of that just rolled off and ran off. Uh, and it's dry again and nothing in the forecast. So, it's going to be pretty rough planting these fall plots. It, I might even wait if if we're not getting any rain coming in when I get back from Nashville. I might even wait, switch over to some later season food. So uh, planting. So like our fall, winter, spring, you know, our lights out. Fall, winter, springs are cereal rye blend. The lights out is our, our oat variety, uh, four oats. And, you know, I can plant them about a month later. So I can get into that first part of September before I even plant them. So if I'm not getting any moisture, I'm not going to plant anything. I might, I'll probably go ahead and plant my honey hole just because it's going to lay there dormant. Uh, but some of my other plots, I'm probably going to wait on. So, you got a Facebook user asking, are they all compatible with Cloverfield, Jolt, and Plot Max? Absolutely. So you can you can spray them, mix them with all three of them. So just put them on there, mix them together, get it sprayed. It's, it's going to do wonders. Keaton, it's good to see you on here, bud. I hope you're doing well out there in Iowa. I don't know about legendary, but I'm just me, buddy. But uh, but no, uh, again, like I say, for you guys out there, we're talking about insecticides. Let's switch it around and talk about plots a little bit. Again, don't be alarmed. I know everybody. I've talked to people. My phone is blowing up daily. Uh I've been on it the whole time. I got down here just enough time to get this fired up because I was on with somebody for about 45 minutes. Uh, that everything is going around the drought right now. Everybody's dry. Well, some of you are starting to get some rain back. Some of you have had rain in different areas throughout the summer. But a lot of us are going through a drought time and we're worried to death about what we're going to plant. Get in there. Get them... Uh, uh, Get them planting is planted if you're getting the moisture. Your honey hole, your slam dunk, your grade eight, stuff like that. Get it in the ground. Uh, again, you heard me say this a minute ago. I'm probably going to go plant my fall, winter, spring. I'm going to switch over to fall, winter, spring and lights out. Uh, if I can't plant when I get back from Nashville because I got a short window there that I can do it in, if we're not getting the moisture, I'm going to wait till September after Labor Day and I will plant our fall, winter, spring or in our lights out mix because you don't want to plant them too early. So I'm always planting them two products a month later than I would normally plant the honey hole, slam dunk, stuff like that. Now, with the honey hole, it doesn't bother me one bit to go out there and compact it into the dry soil that hasn't had any rain. We don't have no rain in the forecast. I'll compact it into that soil and let it sit there dormant for a month before we get rain. I don't care about that mix. Now you get into like the the slam dunk, the fall winters, I mean, the slam dunk, the grade eight, stuff like that. You're getting into, you're going to have a lot of issues with birds getting in the way with your peas and your, and stuff like that that's in them mixes. So I try to stay away from putting them down until I know I got rain coming. So the honey hole, you can get it planted. It'll lay there dormant. I think you guys probably seen a post that I did here a while back that I had a honey hole plot that I planted never got the rain the night it's supposed to rain and that was the uh, first week of august something like that a couple years ago and never got rain till the third of october and two weeks later it was green and lush uh, that seed just sets our dormant you don't have no issues with it rick you say you see you have i see you have your bags turned around what are you talking about everything's backwards to you guys out there right now Or it's turned back around the right way. 
because I had somebody get a hold of me after the show two weeks ago and told me that they were seeing everything like it was in a mirror. So I flopped stuff around. So I'm just wondering what you guys were seeing out there. Because I can change it if it is. I'm just a food plotter, guys. This technical stuff, you're lucky I can turn this computer on. I need a four-year-old in here to show me how to run it. Turn the right way now. Okay, that sounds good. That's good. So I apologize for the last week or whenever it was. I had no idea it was switched to that mirrored deal because it doesn't show me on my end. You guys got to tell me. So perfect, Rick. I appreciate it, bud. Again, like I said, I'm not too bright. You know that, buddy. You've been around me enough down in Southern Illinois. I'm not, I'm not the brightest cookie. I'm a few bricks short of a load. So when it comes to technology, I'm, I'm not the guy. But uh, I can plant a food plot, though. Uh, and that don't take a lot. But, uh, but no, yeah, just pick your right seed mixes, guys. I know that was a show last week, but I really like pushing that now because I'm getting the calls. I'm getting a lot of calls of viewers that's been on here. Uh, want more info, which is awesome. I love that. Uh, and the, the number one topic right now is what to plant and how late can I plant it? So another thing is clover. The gentleman I was just on the phone with talking about fall plantings of clover. Probably one of the best ways ever to establish a food plot. But if you're wanting a lot of forage there the first year, uh, you, you know, unless you want to maintain it and pour the fertilizer to it, you better plant it in the spring because that first year of a fall planting, you're going to have less wheat competition and stuff, but you're just not going to have the growth that you really want. Uh, people want to plant stuff and they want it to look like the front cover of a catalog that first fall. And a fall planting of a good forage clover, alfalfa, stuff like that, you're just not going to get that big growth out of it. So do a spring planting. If you want to establish it for the, for the next years to come, uh, a fall planting is a great way to do it. Oh, Scuba Steve's on here. Scuba Steve, I think you need to come to Nashville in two weeks, or actually less than that, a little over a week, and cook breakfast one morning while I'm at the show. Rick Stillman, how deep should I plant my slam dunk? Well, Rick, I like myself, I don't like going over a quarter inch with slam dunk. Even though it has the peas in it that you can go a little deeper, you take a big chance of burying the smaller seeds too deep by trying to do that. So what I do is I'll call the pack that food plot, I'll broadcast my seed, and I'll run back over to again with a call the pack or roller, tire track it in, something like that. You will see some of the peas still out there on the soil, the step down in the soil. You'll still get good germination rate, but you take a good chance of not... Uh, burying them little seeds too deep. So I always try to, I always try to stick around that quarter inch there if you're going to try to drag over it or rake over it or something like that. But uh, by compacting it, a lot of times if you've got a good firm seed bed, you'll still see some peas up there, like I said. Don't worry about it. Facebook user, it's supposed to be in the 90s all this week with no rain. I'm going to try to get my honey hole in the ground around August 5th. I think I know who that user is, and that's a perfect time for him. Danny Robinson makes a good point here. Danny's one of my pro staffers, long, long, one of my pro staffers from way back, still here. Uh, he always mixes clovers in with his annual uh, fall plots, and why he does that is he's going to have his annuals there then clovers are going to establish their root system he will have some growth out of them clovers but the next spring then clovers are just going to start flourishing out of the ground so great way to do it scuba you come to nashville and cook for me i promise you i'll send you home with some goodies i'm telling you that right now and i'll even put you in a hotel room i guess it depends on what you're cooking though Jason, no, you're good. You're not a Facebook user anymore. It's under your name, bud. I appreciate that. I know who I'm talking to now. Yeah, Danny, you're spot on when you're mixing them clovers in with your annuals. That's, that's a great way to do it, to get them established. And 
for some reason, you know, you don't get a real good stand of it. You think it's a little thin. You can always go in there and overseed some. I'm not going to say frost seed because you don't know what's coming up there. Uh, wait till wait till that frost is out of that ground, and then plants start to emerge up a little bit. Then clovers. Then you'll see if you got some bare spots here and there. Then you can kind of touch them up a little bit. So, uh, but a lot of times, just by putting them in with your fall mixes, you're you're establishing a great plot and don't have to do any overseeding. Uh, I got a Facebook user, Rob. You're doing a great job. Had to tune in for information. With very limited rain in the area, I have had a lot of success with the no no till drill. Oh, no till drill. Sorry, but they're all scrolling up here. No till drill by using it for the moisture and had it worked up and loosened. Yeah, absolutely. No till drill works excellent. I mean, if you if you, somebody out there has a no till drill and they can use it, I mean that that's more power to you guys, man. That's the best way to go. All right, I think you guys are looking on here right now. Mark Coleman and Jason are both in here talking about it. if you're coming up. If I'm saying a Facebook user is asking a question, that they are logging in through the Redline Marketing page instead of the Antler King page, and it's popping up their name. Don't know why it does that, but I'm going to find out tomorrow since we got her figured out. I appreciate it, guys. Mark Coleman, another another pro staffer I got on here. A lot of pro staffers are on here, man. These guys are working their butts off for me. I appreciate everything they do. Uh, I know we don't get to talk as much as we normally do or get to unless we're at a show, but uh, it's that busy time of the year. So I'm glad to see you guys on here and I appreciate it. I just hope you guys know how much I do appreciate it. And if any of you guys want to come cook for me at Nashville too, that's great too. I'm, all, I'm always up for a little buffet or something there. As long as it's not Chinese, I'm all right. Old Brian's on here. What's up, buddy? You should be out there putting some plots in or tearing some timber up or doing something. All that fancy equipment of yours. Another one of my pro staffers just popped on here, Brian. You know, there, Brian Ballard. Get on there and look him up. If you guys are needing any kind of work done or anything like that, he's the guy to look at. He's got all the equipment to do it. Uh, anything from putting plots in, clearing timber, you name it, he's got it. That plug, Brian, cost you a steak dinner right there. Oh, Todd's the one talking about. I have Todd's on here. It's good to see you on here, buddy. This is the man that taught me everything I know about food plots. So, Mr. Todd Stittleberg, he's the founder of Antler King. I should have known it was him talking about a no-till drill. Todd, I was watching a video about you earlier today. Uh, had a gentleman get a hold of me complaining about percentages of products in a bag. And uh, I sent over the video you did of you explaining to him by how it's done up by the pound and not by volume. And he was all happy-go-lucky and couldn't believe the video you did there. So I'm glad I still had that on there. Yeah, Todd's been on vacation. He, yeah, he's been on a good vacation. Yeah, he has. But no, like like Todd was in here talking, no-till drill is a great way to do it. And and also, guys, if you look, a lot of your, a lot of different organizations out there, Pheasants Forever, things like that, they have these drills that you can rent for a little or nothing. I mean, I know we have one here at the, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called here. I just drew a blank. Oh, huh, just drew a blank. But I can go down there and I can rent it, and I think it's, is it five bucks an acre? I mean, it, it's so cheap. It's unbelievable how cheap it is. But they charge you by the acre you plant. It's got a dial on it, and it tells you how many acres you're going through, and that's how you pay for it. And it's little or nothing. And uh, But I know Pheasants Forever has them. A couple other different organizations have them. They work very, very well. These are smaller ones. They're not the great big ones. Most of them are like three to five foot long, uh, where you can pull with. You don't have to have such a big tractor to pull them with. But, man, you can really really put some good plots in uh, our barricade our shield product man using a drill with that is unbelievable how good a success that you can get a 
Uh oh. What is he talking about? He's in Knoxville. He's going to hook me up with some breakfast burritos. Hey, there you go. I'll see you at the Nashville show. You come to the Nashville show. I'll tell you what. I'll do it. I'll treat you right, buddy. But no, getting back to our planning, guys, again, uh, for the ones I see, we climbed up here in numbers quite a bit here. Uh, pick, the right, pick the right mix. You know, you guys want the fall products this year. You know, the fall, winter, spring. The lights out them are two products that you can plant later you don't have to plant them as early as you do your honey hole slam dunk and all that so you got some time there to play around with if you're not getting the moisture stuff like that uh our new southern greens blend i mean this blend here is, is actually turning out to be one of my favorites uh honey hole slam dunk and trophy clover will always be my favorite mixes for antler king they were the ones that I have used for over 25 years, 28 years now, 25, uh, 28 on the mineral, actually. Uh, but 25 years, you cannot beat them. But that, that Southern Greens, I tested it three years ago. Take that back. Two years ago, I tested it. I planted an extra two acres of it last year. This year, I'm planting an extra three acres just because the deer devour it. I love this. We've designed it for a southern food mix, uh, a seed mix, but we found out, well, Todd planted some up north and they destroyed it. I planted in Illinois. We got guys in Iowa, Ohio, the deer destroying it everywhere. It's just an unbelievable mix, but especially for you guys down south that you're not getting a, a, uh, a frost, you're not getting the cold weather, the collard greens in this mix does not take a frost to turn sweet, so you're going to have that high energy food source with them greens uh, without getting that frost. So, but for us guys up here that do get the frost, they're going to eat them, them collard greens. We're going to be in them and they're hammering them collard greens, but then you got your tubular radishes are in there with it and the winter wheat and stuff and them tubular radishes are going to be your late season food. So just because we're eating the collard greens doesn't mean you're going to run out of food because you got all that, them uh, uh, radishes and stuff in there to hold them up. All right, I got things flying 100 mile an hour here, guys. I don't know if I'm missing questions or if my pro staffers were taking care of it. Yeah, Floyd Young, there, another pro staffer on here. Man, you guys are all popping on here, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Floyd Young, right here in my area, here in Illinois, central Illinois, puts in unbelievable food plots. And uh, the good thing about Floyd is I'm right here. So if he needs help, I'll go over and help him. So, uh, it no no project too big too small so don't thank you if you need some help don't be afraid to ask somebody or give me a call i know a lot of guys in different areas if you're having issues getting food plots put in you don't have the equipment you don't have the time uh, i can probably set you up with somebody so a lot of guys in different areas that i know that do it and they do it very reasonable floyd talking about how he loves southern greens last year he's putting two acres in this year the southern greens is unbelievable and again floyd's in indiana uh, he did live here in Illinois, not too far from me, he, but he's still not very far across the Indiana line. Uh, the Southern Greens, man, I'm telling you, they are really, really taking over. Facebook user, can I do Southern Greens along, clo along with Clover now, establish it for spring? You absolutely can. I mean, you can mix some clover in with that that southern greens uh, to get it to get the clover established. Uh, again, you might not see a lot of growth out of that clover because the southern greens is going to grow up. It's going to get big and lush, uh, but you'll still have that root system develop for that clover. Next spring, it's going to jump right up. It's going to do great for you. So, again, if you wasn't on here a little bit ago, by doing that. If for some reason, when it starts greening up the next year, the clover starts greening up, you got spotty areas, just get in there, overseed some of them spottier areas, and you're good to go. So don't get in there and frost seed it. Wait till you see what starts popping up, because the last thing you want to do is overseed with too much clover or anything. I mean, no matter what you're planting, you don't want to overseed. But on that clover, I like to wait. I'm not a big frost seeding guy, unless I'm frost seeding a brand new plot. When it comes to established plot, I always wait till I start getting that spring green up, let them plants start merging out of the ground. Then I see what kind of bare spots I have. Uh, a lot of times, if I went in there to frost seed it, I'm gonna put way too much seed down and you do not wanna, you don't wanna stun them plots like that. 
Jeff Johnson, that was you with the, the Southern Greens and the Clover. I appreciate that, bud. You're coming up uh, Facebook user, too. These guys on here found out, Jeff, get on there next time and go to the Redline page, and it's bringing up your name. I will find out why it's not doing that on the Antler King page. Jason had great luck with the Southern Greens last year as well. That, that's perfect. Danny Robinson, I mixed Booner Buffet in with my Southern Greens last year and ended up with very solid sand of it. That's awesome, bud. That Booner Buffet, is, it's doing good now. I mean, if you guys are looking for a good al alfalfa variety, I know we're getting off the insecticides. We pretty much all talked about it. If anybody's jumped on here to learn anything about insecticides, and here I am rambling about plots, ask me a question on here. I'll talk about it again. Uh, we kind of went over it. Uh, the beginning of the show. I'll be more than happy to talk about it some more uh, if if you need to hear something about it. But no, the Booner Buffet has two premium varieties of alfalfa, variety of clover, variety of chicory. You guys, I'm telling you what, it needs a good soil. So give it a good soil, good amount of fertilizer. It loves potash, uh, and it'll do good for you. I have a client asking about Southern Greens on the Mexican border. How will it perform there? But I, I don't see why it wouldn't perform there. The, the only issue they might have is just, you know, moisture, just depending on what they're getting for moisture, if any. Uh, but if they can get moisture out of it, I guarantee you it's going to grow there. But they need some moisture on it. Just like, boy, you already know that. I'm not, uh, I don't mean nothing bad by that. But yeah, as long as they can get the moisture there, uh, it, it'd grow very well. I had some guys last year planting it in some real nasty areas in southern Texas. I mean, dry, dry. And it amazed me on the pictures they sent me of what it looked like. All right, let me make sure I didn't miss something here. And guys, one thing I am going to bring up there are a lot of people on here talking about food, and I'm getting hungry. Uh, one thing I am going to bring up is plot max. I preach it all the time, guys. That plot max is a soil conditioner. It will spike your pH, but it's going to be short-lived. It's not a pH enhancer. I know a lot of you guys on here have heard me say it a million times. But I still get the phone call daily by multiple people wanting to know if it will bounce their pH up way up there and not have to ever use lime. It is not designed for that. It is designed to break down the soil, allow the nutrients to get to the root system better. So that's what you're getting there. You got humic acid. It will spike that pH, but it's not going to be long term like it would be if you're using pellet or ag lime. So go with your, your pelleted lime or your ag lime to raise that pH up. The plot max, that soil conditioner, I will not plant a plot without it. I know it sounds like a sales pitch, but I won't. Uh, I did go quite a few years, years and years ago without using it. Uh, but then when I used it for the first time, I've never planted another plot without it. I mean, I always mix it in with my chemical, my herbicide, when I'm killing an area, especially my fall plots, I'll mix it right in with that Roundup or Liberty or whatever I'm using to kill that plot off. Uh, talk about killers. Guys, the good thing about this podcast is when I start talking, I start thinking about phone calls I get. I'm getting a bunch more on 2,4-D, about killing plots off of 2,4-D. 2,4-D has residual to it. It can last on that soil, in that soil, for up to 30 days. Try not to use 2,4-D when you're killing off a plot to plant one. Use your glyphosate, use your Liberty, use something like that. I switched over to Liberty. That's why I'm saying Liberty. Uh, because a lot of the plants I got now, the, 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 the uh, glyphosate will not even touch them. Uh, but try to stay away from that 2,4-D when you're killing a plot off because you will have to wait longer uh, before you plant. So, or you're not going to have nothing there. Uh, Anthony, not sure if you covered it, but what do you use for army worms? I had them once and plotted them, man, they destroyed it. Again, bud, this product right here, Anthony. Anthony, another pro staffer of ours on here, asking questions, getting going. I appreciate Anthony from New York. Uh, 
that insecticide right there is the best thing ever. I can actually give you a little bit better thing here if I can find it here. Uh, oh, let's go here. How about this? There you go. That's exactly what it is. This product works wonderful. Under $10 for a concentrated bottle. This bottle here, like I've said 100 times a night probably, it is uh, a little under half full. I've used it since my third year. So on the on here too, I also have on the comments there, Anthony, there's four different insecticide chemicals that you can use for army worms, the beetles, the whole nine yards. This is the one I use, but the other one is the chemicals. You can pick through them. Maybe you might have something different in your area up there in New York. Uh, but this one here, I buy from Menards. You can get the Real King. Tyson's Fleet Farm, you can get it, Tractor Supply, Walmart, Amazon, very inexpensive. It kills on contact and it lasts for three months. It, it will keep them off for three months. So uh, like I was saying earlier, I, I only spray my insecticides when I am when it, early in the morning. So I'm going from dark or right at daylight, I should say, till 10, 11 o'clock and then I won't spray anymore, especially when it comes to army worms. The reason I do that is the army worms feed at night. So I like getting that product on that chemical then. I said earlier too, uh, when I had them real bad three years ago, I took that product, I went out eight o'clock at night in the dark, the army worms are up on the plants, they were down in the, on, in the soil, I could see them. Uh, I went ahead and, and gave them a big dose then to kill on contact. So you can do it either way, but I like doing mine early in the morning and you get a good three months out of it. Mix it right in with your clover fuel, which you're spraying your clovers. Mix it in with your jolt, spraying your annual plots. One pass application works out perfect. You can even, you, you spray it on there uh, prior to even planting. You're mixing it with your glyphosate, your Roundup, anything like that. Uh, mix it right in there with it. It's going to do wonders for you. All right, let's get back here to the chats here, see what we got. No problem, Anthony. I, pre I appreciate you jumping on here. It's always good to hear from you. I'm still waiting for that order. I still haven't got an order from you. What's going on? You're not, you're not going to plant this year? You're too busy making all that money? Probably all this storm damage, isn't it? Old Robert's on here. I appreciate it, buddy. Good seeing you this last weekend. Love seeing you and the your better half, I should say, and that beautiful little daughter. I'm, I'm glad to see that, bud. Have a good time. Just checking on here, make sure. You guys are pouring them in here tonight. I'm trying to keep up. I appreciate the pro staff guys answering a lot of this stuff. I appreciate it. You guys are worth your weight in gold, I'm telling you. Oh, do I got any Booner Buffet in here? I do. Right here. Let's see if I can see it here for you guys. Anthony's asking, not Anthony, but Mark's asking me a question here. I can tell you here in a second, bud. Nope. The percentage is... This is the one I can't. There we go. Nineteen percent, is that what you're asking, bud? Let me look on here. What do you ask? Mark, do you ask a percentage or what do you ask? Oh, what type of oh it's Ladino, bud. Uh Mark's asking I am sorry, I thought you asked what percentage. Nineteen percent. Uh the the Booner Buffet Mark has uh Ladino clover in it. I apologize. For some reason I thought you asked what the uh the percentage was. 
I could tell you about trophy clover, but the winter buffet, I couldn't remember off the top of my head on the percentage. Sorry about that. I got mixed up on there. Robert's on it. He knows what Aunt, uh, what Mark wanted. Heck. Late to the party. Uh, so hot. Thank you. Buddy, I don't know who's telling me that you got to go to the pool first, but you're coming up under a Facebook user. But I, that pool actually sounds pretty good. I haven't been in the pool since I was about 14 years old, though, so I don't know what they feel like. People make fun of me when I jump in with my pants on because I don't own a pair of shorts. So... Yeah, Danny, them, them chicory blooms are kind of a bluish tint color, so that's probably what you're seeing, Mark. Hey, Doug Lamb. No, no, that's why I put it on there. It's not tonight. Uh, or not tomorrow night. I had to do it tonight. And we uh, got some stuff going on. Uh, actually, a video shoot I got to do right before dark tomorrow, evening, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, and the lighting is going to be about perfect then. So I had to switch this around for that. It was kind of something that's been planned for quite a few months. And we just realized that last week that it was going to, uh, actually realized that right when Rubline posted that we we're going to have it on Tuesday night, that day we got the email saying that we had to do this video shoot. So, uh, I got to do that tomorrow night, right before dark. So it takes all the best lighting and everything to make me look good. So I'll, I'll do it whenever they tell me it makes me look good. So it takes a lot of, a lot of the right type of lighting. I'm telling you. No, they're not engagement picks. Not yet. One of these days it will be, but not yet. You got to get through her daughter's wedding first. Oh, gas skills on here. That's who was asking the question. All right, guys, what kind of questions you got? We're about out of time here. I know I'm just rambling on. I'm just kind of throwing some questions out. I got jotted down here that, again, I get all the phone calls and emails. So anytime I get something that I think is very interesting or if I find something that I'm getting the same question by multiple people, I jot it down so we can talk about it and discuss it these evenings like this. So because you might have the same question or not even thinking about asking the question. So, but uh, that's why I'm on here doing it. And I think I pretty much have them all answered tonight. Some of them, you guys didn't even know I was even answering them. I was just jabbering on. I guess I got a question for you though. Uh-oh, Doug Lamb asked about getting those texts. Oh, buddy, I did. I've got to text you back. I did get your text about that golfing. Yes, I did. Uh, I'll get with you on that. Um, I'm always listening to hear anybody talk about seed varieties. Anybody out there have a variety or a mix that they think we should work with? Uh, you don't have to talk, tell me tonight. Think about it. Tell me next time. Email me. Call me. Text me. Uh Something that you're thinking, something that you might be playing around with, uh, why you like it, why you think so, a company like Antler King should uh, bring out a product like this. Let us know. We're always we're always here to listen to our customers, our friends, and uh, man, that's how that's how that's how it works. So we want to give you guys what you're wanting, and we get these calls a lot. We get the emails a lot, or I do, about certain different varieties out there that people are mixing together themselves and they're having great success. Uh, and we're playing with some of them right now and seeing how they work. So if you got anything, let me know. Floyd Young, I knew you'd say small town throwdown. I knew it. I forgot you're on here. Your clients and dear miss it. I know they do, bud. That was a great one. That was a good one. Old grade eight took that one away from you. That's the only negative thing about bringing out new mixes is because usually when you bring out a new one, you got to get rid of one because especially for shelf space in a store, stuff like that, you about got to, you about got to terminate one to bring in a new one. So it's got to be something good because I don't, there's nothing here that I would terminate. So it would have to be something really, really good to make that happen. And a couple of years of testing to make sure it's worth doing it. So, I know you had two, Floyd. I know how you are. 
You might be short, but you're smart. I know. At least you still got kale from us, bud. That's all I can say. You can still buy kale from me. That's it, or get it from me. So you can you can kind of mix up your own there a little bit with all of our products. Floyd, stop out here. The guys on there claiming that that clover needs nitrogen. You know, here. <laughs> This is why I'm not on these pages. That's why I never get on them. I'm not members to them. Used to, I had to get away from them because all of the negative, or actually bad advice, uh, advice and the negativity. It just kills me, guys. Uh, when you got, you got a person that's trying to start out and he don't know anything, and he tells you that from the get-go, and then people just knock him down because he doesn't know that's not me i'm not there for that that's when i'll and when i was on them that's when i person personal message them uh, but the nitrogen part your soil is going to have amount of nitrogen in it at all times you do not have to add nitrogen to get clover to germinate i have never added nitrogen to a clover plot in 30 years Never. I run straight potash. That is all the clovers. That's all your legume plants need. Um, I run a straight potash 0060. I run at 300 pounds per acre. Never. I've never added. Why would I add nitrogen to a plot that doesn't need it? And all it's going to do is feed the weeds and grasses. That's all I can say to that. Um, but I'm glad you brought that up, Floyd, because that is a, that is something good there to talk about. Uh, but no, uh, these same guys are telling you, 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 you should never mow clover. You have to mow clover if you want to keep it palatable, keep it as high as protein rate. You have to mow it when it matures out. When that flower comes on, that's a tattletale sign right there. So all I can do is preach it in the way I can preach it, and I just stay off stuff like that. I wish I could be on there to help people out, but I, I just can't stand, I can't sleep at night by how some of these people treat people, and I just can't do it. So, let's see here. Mark Coleman, do we have a plot, mi uh, plot mix that has soybeans in it? Yeah, our red zone. Our red zone has soybeans in it. Yes, it does. And I see Floyd Young already commented that. Oh, thanks, Floyd. I appreciate it. I didn't see that quick enough. Danny, I appreciate it. Jason, and me guys are all on there helping out. Yep. As you can tell, Mark, it's red zone. You got everybody commenting that on there. And I do not have a bag of that in here just because it's so heavy. I don't. I can't put it on the shelves. I got some in the other room, but I don't have any in here. But it comes in a half acre bag. Got sunflowers mixed in with it. Some peas mixed in with it. Very, very good mix. It's one of the mixes I tell everybody. If you can't plant a couple acres of it, don't plant it because the deer will literally destroy it when it starts getting about that tall. Just like a farmer's field, the the beans sprout. Excuse me, when the beans sprout. You see that little lush green coming up, the deer will get in there and wipe it out. So it's better if you can plant larger areas with it instead of just a short little quarter acre kill plot and never let it grow up unless you fence it off, which a lot of customers right now are doing. I have a lot of them calling in using solar powered fences and, and fencing them off. Works very, very well. All right, guys, we got a minute and a half before they're going to shut me off here. You got anything else for me? Any other questions? I'll look back here, make sure I didn't miss nothing. Mark Coleman, any special guests coming on the show soon? Well, I tried getting Charlie the, the lab out here today, but he wouldn't sit here with me. So but I got a feeling that's a different type of special you're talking about. Uh, I'm working on a very good one. The negative thing is, is trying to get people together. Uh, it's not as easy as you think it would be. Everybody's got something going on especially through the evening at, during the week, like you guys know here. 
uh, you're probably out doing stuff before you get ready to come in here and hop on it. So, but I am going to have somebody I already got them scheduled already. It will be the first of September. Yes, first of the first show in September, uh, the first Tuesday of September. I have a a very good one coming on. Actually, two of them together. Uh, but between now and then, we're just working on trying to get get a couple of them lined out that we could get them on here. Um, and I need to call one to see if he's able to do it here in a couple of weeks that we've talked about. So, so yeah, we're gonna. And he's a uh, his food plots. You, well, I've had him on here before. His food plots are unbelievable. His antler king plots and how he how he puts them out there to help everything. How how he funnels deer with food plots, how he incorporates food plots in the middle of 80 acre cornfields. It's just amazing. Uh, you'll, you'll really, really get a kick out of it. So scuba, I'm there. I'm, I'm at the show, the fourth, fifth and sixth. You come to Nashville, I'll put you up, send you home a product. If you cook, I'm telling you right now, bud. And you even get to meet Stacy. She'll be there too. She appreciated good warm cooked meal. All right, guys, I'm gonna get off here. I appreciate all you pro staffers being on here, the customers here, anybody joined on here tonight. I appreciate it very much. Looking forward to it here in a couple of weeks. We're gonna jump right back on here. Hopefully I'll have a special guest then. You'll know beforehand I'll have it posted. So you guys have a good night and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.